In this video, I'm going to talk about API Miner. Uh, to install after downloading, go to README. There it has some information how to install it. It said that first you have to change uh, API config file to, have to write the address you want your uh, log files to be written. I choose this folder and you need after a cop uh, changing that you need to copy this file in drive c and it says that how you can run it uh, you can put it in the drive um, in the environment variable or run it from the pass it's uh, already there i have a sample 10-2 that i'm gonna try to run it uh, and in the logs, uh, what it do, when I using API miner and run it, it's gonna uh, read the memory and whatever API is called, it's gonna uh, write it here in the in a log file. The API miner needs to have an administrator access, so uh, you need to run the your PowerShell or command from the as administrator. Uh, what you can do right click and say run as administrator after that what I'm gonna do I go to the folder that I have installed API miner the command I uh, use is api miner.exe dash dash app uh, the folders that uh, the my sample is uh, there I'm gonna run sample 10 dash 3 Enter. It's gonna. You remember it was a sample that are uh, uh, inputting the injecting a code in uh, Notepad.exe. Ask me the PID. Let me uh, give the PID for Notepad is twenty seven forty twenty seven forty, and it's gonna add. Uh, how much memory it wants to be allocated i'm gonna say 4000 and which type of access it wants i'm gonna enter five and enter uh, it's allocated less uh, after running this uh, you see that how it's executed as it i didn't double click the file i uh, I just run api miner.exe dash dash app and the name of the uh, sample what happened api miner goes to run it and what I see is the UI that we had for that uh, this sample let's go check the logs in here you see another file is created if I am double click on it I'm gonna see the logs related to that file you see list of the APIs calls even here it said enter PID of notepad.exe shows that it's, it's right to console it's the API write this buffer in the console and here after asking the memory it said that uh, enter amount of memory you want to write and enter the permissions let's see uh, here it's called nt allocate uh, virtual memory it allocate the memory it says in this address uh, these are the parameters passed to this api is uh, uh, it has a base address and so on uh, the permissions by uh, the protection showing the permission and so on these are the parameters passed to nt allocate virtual memory that to by that uh, when it's allocating a memory by calling uh, apis uh, on that uh, sample uh, so we can see list of the apis called uh, in case uh, and this is the way that we use while we are doing dynamic analysis it's not just by running the program and see visually what the malware do we can do we can get the list of the apis and see what it's doing because uh, uh, 
the samples are not simple like like what we have we want to see if there is a, any api calls like allocate virtual memory or network connection reading files reading credentials or something like this we based on the list of the apis and let's say better uh, in, the, in the sequence of the apis we can find out if there is a malicious operations happening in that sample or not